Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius, and welcome back to the Fortress of the Mind podcast. And I haven't had a chance to do a podcast in a, about nine or ten days or so because I've been uh, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And you can see those photos on my Instagram account, which is on my homepage if you're interested. But I have put out a few posts during that time. But this is going to be my first podcast in uh, in about nine or ten days, give or take. And so I thought I'd use this podcast to answer a question that I received by email from a reader, which was a, not the typical type of question that I usually get. This is one that's a little bit more of a serious type of issue that's being discussed, but one that's still important. So what I'll do is I'll read through his email and, and then just go through some suggestions on how to deal with that. And it's obvious from reading this guy's email that English is not his first language. So when I read this through, bear with me with the grammatical problems and construction problems. Uh, it's not due to my my reading shortcomings, but to the shortcomings of the writer here. So... Let me go through and read this here. He says, uh, Dear Quintus, uh, recently with university I thought things were going well. Everything was a lot better, social, grades, etc. However, a recent situation with university had me on charges of plagiarism. Never had such a thing in my whole education so naturally freaking out, checking mistakes in my referencing, etc., building my case and evidence. That's that's what the sentence says. Doesn't It's not very coherent, but that's what he says. He goes on to say, This whole ordeal brought back a lot of bad memories with what seems like feelings of shame and disgust for myself, especially when I didn't achieve what I wanted. It seemed I was almost at the breaking point or even reached it. I've slapped myself out of it and slowly getting that fire back. This had me questioning what does a person actually do when such moments of despair happen. I have a feeling these situations I just have to shut up, accept as the outcome, and move on instead of being so childish. Thanks for thanks for responding so quickly to my stupid questions. All right. Well, however ineptly phrased this reader's question is, I wanted to take the opportunity to seize on this question and and uh, and make a podcast out of it because I think it's it, it it's not really important that he does not really articulate himself with as much clarity and uh, fluency that I really think is required in this type of a question but from what I can gather it sounds like this is someone that's at a university he's either been ex- uh, accused of plagiarism or has already been adjudicated adjudicated of plagiarism and is in the process of trying to deal with that issue uh, right now. So the question is, how do you deal with that? Well, I think it's important to explore both possibilities. Because the writer of this question is not clear on, on the specifics of what is going on, he doesn't give me any specifics to go on. I've already asked for more specifics, but he doesn't really give them. But either one of two situations is is in effect right now. Either he is in the process of going through a adjudication or some sort of administrative hearing uh, based on an accusation of plagiarism, or he has already been found to have committed plagiarism and is trying to deal with the negative outcomes that will result from that. All right, so let's go through both possibilities because I think we have to. If you're at a university and you're accused of plagiarism, first of all, that's a serious thing, okay? It's an ethical issue. Universities all over the world now are very, very conscious now of ethical type issues like cheating, plagiarism, um, you know, all of these sort of associated ethical issues now. It's a big hot button topic, it's a big deal. And it, it rightfully it should be. That's one of the few things that, that I think is important because these type of ethical issues are, are important. Um, you know, the definition of plagiarism, I'm not going to get into that. I, I don't think that's necessary. You can look that up yourself. Everybody knows how to use a dictionary. Everyone knows what uh, the dictionary definition of plagiarism is. 
But schools, as a general rule, schools these days take plagiarism seriously. So if this person has been accused of plagiarism, there should be some sort of administrative procedure to go through. There's some, there should be some sort of e either uh, intra-departmental procedure to go through where it can be discussed, or there can be some sort of uh, uh, you know hearing op an opportunity for a hearing on it, or some sort of way to explain yourself or write a rebuttal. Because legitimately, there are situations where it is it is debatable. Okay. Um, most often, it seems like university plagiarism happens in, in the most obvious, clear-cut types where students will just cut and paste stuff they find on the internet or just cut and paste uh, stuff they find from books. And it's, it's a pretty straightforward, uh, obvious thing. But there are other situations where it's not so straightforward, okay? Issues with citations, issues with ideas, issues with other associated things. So what's of primary importance, if you're in the situation where you've been accused of plagiarism or cheating or some other ethical violation, you need to get, you need to find out exactly what the procedures are for the hearing process in your school or your university and educate yourself on that. And if it requires you to retain legal counsel, then you should do that because you don't want to be expelled from school. You don't want to be facing some sort of ethical violation that can impact your future because that, that, type of stuff is taken very seriously okay it's not a joke maybe it used to be decades ago but it's not anymore okay it's a very serious thing and it's become more so now with the age of the internet where there's so much information available from so many sources that people are, are much more conscious of it now than maybe they used to be so the, the, the first thing uh, that I would suggest my advice to this guy is you know, find out what the the administrative hearing process processes are. Get representation for it. And maybe getting representation is, is unnecessary. Maybe that's too extreme. Maybe that's too um, uh, you know not necessary in the situation. But you should at least educate yourself on what's required and get some competent advice. If you're disputing it, if you're if you are disputing the fact that you plagiarized, you need to have an understanding of how to follow through on uh, presenting your side of the story. If you're not disputing it, you you need representation anyway. You need some someone to help you as well. You know, so it doesn't. It's it, it's unimportant to me whether you did something or didn't do something. What matters is that you protect your rights because you have certain rights, and it's critical that you, um, you know, you take steps to preserve your rights because. If you don't do it, nobody will. Nobody will. Okay. I remember when I was a student. This was back in the uh, the uh, the late eighties. Uh, two guys that I knew were hauled in front of a, a professor for allegations of plagiarism, and one guy was entirely innocent. Entirely innocent. It was uh, a very strange situation. What had happened was. One guy had, had done some problem sets, some homework. He had gone to bed, and this other dirtbag had sneaked into his room and act, had actually accessed his, his paperwork and had copied out his this other guy's answers. Had actually literally copied out word for word another guy's work product and passed it off as it, passed it off as his own. And of course, you know the professor reading it. She doesn't know whether it's you know who's plagiarizing, you know who's copying who or who's doing what. And eventually, the, the the truth came out. You know that one guy was innocent, and another guy had been the malfeasor. You know he had uh, had unjustifiably copied the work of someone else. And this guy came within a hair's breadth of being expelled from from this school. So it's, uh, you know, it's, um, these are important things, okay? And actually, when you get to be an attorney like I am, you get to have a very strong bullshit detector. And this guy, you know, I didn't read all of his email. He sounds like a very nice guy. But I think he's also deliberately holding back information from me. He's not providing me the full story. And that's okay. You know, I'm, I can only, uh, you know, operate on the information that I have, and I can only provide the information that um, 
Uh, that's as good as the information that I'm given. But I'm assuming in the first scenario, let's call it scenario one, that he has just been accused and nothing has been adjudicated yet. Okay, so you've heard my advice for that scenario. Let's go to the second possibility, the possibility where he's already, let's say someone, he's already admitted it, it's already been adjudicated, it's a done deal, whatever, okay? How do you deal with that? Okay, how do you deal with that? Well, my thoughts about that are this, and this goes back to a line that I I remember hearing from uh, a film from David Mamet, one of my favorite directors. Um, He made a film called House of Games back in, I think it was 1986, very good movie. You should see it if you get a chance. And one of the characters in the movie says, if you've done something unforgivable, you should forgive yourself. Okay, If you've done something unfor- unforgivable, you should forgive yourself. And I think that's a life lesson that, that, we, a life lesson that we should all internalize. If you've done something unforgivable and you're tormented about it and you're tortured about it, you know what you should do? You should forgive yourself. Because tormenting yourself about it, torturing yourself about it, is not going to do you or the universe any good. What's done is done. And it's done. Okay? And this applies not just to situations where you're dealing with plagiarism, but to situations where you've been accused. Let's say, I, I, I like in this situation to say someone who's been accused of it, let's say uh, someone's facing a DUI charge or domestic battery charge, or uh, say they were caught cheating on an exam or something. This is the same type of, this plagiarism, this is the same type of, it's, it's, it's kind of in the same universe. It's a, it's a, a petty misdemeanor. It's, a, it's sort of a... Uh, a petty transgression. It's a transgression, but it's not so bad that uh, I mean, you're you're not. It's not like you're facing time and lockup here for this. Okay, so don't be don't become too much of a drama queen about it. But it is a severe blow to one's ego. Okay, because you got caught. Okay, and I think that's the real reason why you're upset. You got caught. Let's be honest. Be honest with yourself. Stop bullshitting the world. Stop bullshitting me. Stop bullshitting everybody else. You fucked up. You stole somebody else's work. You copied somebody else's paragraphs. You dipped into waters that you had no business dipping into. And you got caught. Okay? Let's just let's just assume that hypothetical here. Okay? Let's just let's just play along with me here. Humor me with that hypothetical okay all right having said all that because i'm going to beat you up a little bit too because that's that that's what you asked me for that that's that's re- that's the real reason why you asked me for my advice is you want to you want to be schooled a little bit be honest be honest but you got your you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar and that's fine everybody in life gets nailed every now and then for transgressions Nobody is perfect. Nobody is, uh, nobody is an angel. Okay, we all do things now and then that cross lines, and that's okay. Okay, but what you should do is learn from it. Okay, if you did do this, don't fucking do it again. That's the first lesson. Number two, tormenting yourself about it, man. Torturing yourself about it, it's not going to do any good. You know. And when you've done something unforgivable, forgive yourself and move on. Move on. Because like, believe me, life is too short. It's very short. And it gets shorter with every year, believe me. <laughs> so I think that's the best way to look at it. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's humiliating. I, I get that. You know, everybody knows about it. When you get caught with your pants down, you say you get charged with a DUI, you get charged with a domestic battery, or you get zapped for something, and everybody knows about it. It's 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 embarrassing. It's humiliating. But you know, things happen to the best of them. Things happen. Things like this happen. I mean, I think I read some somewhere that uh, Teddy Kennedy, the uh, brother of the president, Robert Ken- uh, John F. Kennedy. Actually, um, I think when he was at Harvard, I think he was accused. He hired someone else to take his exams for him. Uh, he later went on to 
Uh, do we even commit even greater transgressions? Um, on, well, fortunately for him, his family was able to have the resources to cover up his shortcomings. Not all of us are that lucky. But the point that I'm trying to make is that everybody does bad things every now and then. And, you know, you should take stock of the situation. You should internalize the lessons that come from the situation. You hopefully will never do this sort of thing again. Okay? Because it's an ethical issue. And nothing is more important than your reputation. And once you lose your reputation, it's uh, it's very difficult to recover from that. Okay, it's very difficult to recover from that. So I think those are the um, those are the lessons that you should internalize. So that's how I'm going to answer this guy's question. If this is still at the accusation stage, find out what's going on, educate yourself on the on the administrative hearing procedures, get help or get representation. Fight it out, okay? Either fight it out or make sure that your rights are asserted because in today's world, if you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will. But if this is already water on, if this is already water under the bridge and this is already something that's been signed, sealed, and delivered, then my advice is going to be don't do this again. Learn from it, forgive yourself, and move on. It's that simple. And it may be simple to say. It may be easy for me to say. But it doesn't mean that I'm not right. So hopefully you'll learn from this and um, you know, go on to be a, a, a greater person from it. I mean, you know, bad things happen to everybody. You know, we've all been fired from jobs. We've all had misfortunes happen to us. We've all been guilty of crossing boundaries or barriers in some way. It's okay. That's the way life goes. What matters is that you learn from it. What matters is that you learn from it. So hopefully that will provide some guidance on this issue. That will conclude our podcast here today at Fortress of the Mind. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.